Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning, friends. It is Sunday, May 17th. And as you can see on our calendar behind me, we are on our one, two, three, four, five, sixth Sunday of the Easter season. We are getting very close to another big event and a change in the color of our liturgical calendar. I wonder what big event could be coming. It seems like we're always thinking about big events in the church, and that's because there are so many special things that happen that help us understand our life in Christ. So for today, first, I'd like you to take a little look around. I am back in the church today. I'm still by myself for the most part. Father Gar is working in his office all the way down the hall. I do have my son Jacob over here off camera working as my cameraman and my prop guy for today's video. But other than that, we're by ourselves. But I think it's important for us to see sometimes that these places that we know and love are still here just as they should be, waiting patiently for the day when we can all come back to be together. I know I can't wait until that day because I sure miss seeing all of you in person. But before you know it, we will be together again. So today, friends, to get us started, I'd like you to think about a time when you have been a helper. Now, there are lots of different ways to be a helper, right? Some things we can do without even thinking about it. Picking up trash taking your plate from the table to the sink when you're done eating. Those are things that we figure out pretty easily, right? Some jobs, though, take a lot of responsibility, and we have to learn how to do them. For example, my sons, Joshua and Jacob, as you know, are a little bit older. They're finishing fifth grade and finishing eighth grade, and they decided this spring that they wanted to start helping to mow the lawn. Well, this makes Mr. John, their daddy, very happy. But this is a big job, and they had to learn how to do it by following Mr. John several times as he would mow the lawn. And now that they're starting to mow the lawn on their own, Mr. John is always nearby, always with them watching to make sure that it goes okay and that they can do the job safely. Some jobs are so big, we need our own helpers to help us do it. And that's kind of the story that we hear today. I'm combining two different Gospels today to help you understand something that's leading us to our big feast coming up. So starting in the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 28, the disciples, the 11 who were remaining, had gone to Galilee just as Jesus had told them to do. And Jesus appeared to them there, just as he had done before, like by the sea as the men were fishing or on the road to Emmaus. He showed up in Galilee and he said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, you must go and make disciples of the nations and baptize them. Teach them to obey all the things that I have told you, and I will be with you to the end of the age. But if we also look in the Gospel of John, Jesus goes on to say, If you love me, you will obey what I have commanded you to do, and I will ask the Father to give you a new helper to be with you forever. The world might not accept this new helper because they cannot see him and do not know it. But you will know it, for it lives with you and will be in you. Jesus said, I will not leave you, but before long I must go to be with my Father in heaven. But because I live again, you will also live. 
on the day that I go to my Father in heaven, you will realize that I am in my Father and you are in me and I am with you. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, they are the ones who love me and will be loved by God and I will love them. So Jesus is promising a helper to come with this huge job that the disciples have been given. They have been told to go all over and make disciples of the nations to build this new church that would follow Jesus. I wonder how the disciples must have felt getting such a big job to do. But Jesus promised them, even though I must go to my Father in heaven and you will not see me anymore, I will send to you, and my Father will send to you a new helper that will be with you wherever you go. This helper is being sent almost like a gift, a very special gift. And this gift says, do not open until Pentecost. I wonder what this helper, this gift could be. Something to think about. In two weeks, we will have the season of Pentecost. So friends, I have a job that I want you to help me with. As you know, in children's church, we love to sing songs. And we've been singing that song, I Am the Church, as our song of praise to remind us that we are the church no matter where we are. Even when we can't be here together, we are still the church and we are connected. So Miss Beth, our music director, has been so kind to give us music that we can sing along with for I Am The Church. And if you get my email, there is a special email with information that tells you how you can record yourself on a laptop or a cell phone camera singing our song. And you can do that listening to this music. I am recording myself on my laptop. That's where you see me on camera. But I'm going to listen to the song and sing it with you. And all I would have to do is record it while I sing and have the music so that I can hear it. And if you send that to me or to Father Gar, that recording of you singing, we can put all of us together for a children's church sing-along, just like we used to do in the big church. And we will someday again. But for now, this is a fun way that we can do it. So let's try it. I'm going to ask my prop man, Jacob, to hold my phone. Can you hold it? I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world. Yes, we're the church together. The church is not a building. The church is not a steeple. The church is not a resting place. The church is the people. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world. Yes, we are the church together. And when the people gather, there's singing and there's praying, there's laughing and there's praying to all of its saying. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. Awesome job singing, friends. So, like I said, directions are available in an email if you would like to join us in singing for a special children's choir that we will share on our upcoming Feast of Pentecost.
we hope to share it, but we are gonna need your help. Speaking of helpers, since we've talked so much about them today and the job of being a helper, I think helpers would be a really good thing for us to think about in our prayers of the people today. So I would like you to think about people who help us, especially during this time of the coronavirus. We're all working together to keep each other safe, but there are some very special people who've done a really big job. Some of them work in hospitals. Some of them work at police stations and drive ambulances or fire trucks. Some of them work in schools. Some of them may be your parents or your older siblings, or they may be your aunts or your uncles or your grandparents, but they are everywhere, these wonderful helpers. So let's think of them. If you would like to grab something to hold on to and focus while you're praying. And when you're ready, we'll begin. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all of the helpers. We ask that you watch them and guide them as they help us and keep them safe in all that they do. We ask you to keep us safe in all that we do as we continue to go about this time. And we wait very patiently for the day that we can all be together. Amen. Thank you, friends, for joining me for another Children's Church, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.